Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. We Came in Like the Wind by Andrea Fossout is a collection of poems that explore the human condition of thoughts, ideas, and dreams. They are universal that everyone can feel and understand. The reader will be able to take these experiences and relate them to their own life and share that same emotion and passion. Andrea was born and raised in a small town in Ontario, Canada. Her love affair with writing began at an early age when she was asked to write a short story at age eight. It became an enjoyable hobby and a creative outlet. We came in like the wind as a collection she'd been writing for over 10 years. It soon became a book, was published in 2019. Andrea continued writing throughout the pandemic and quickly wrote another book, Full Moon Survivor, that was published in January of 2024. We came in like the wind, a beautiful exploration of human emotions, and author Andrea Fosselt is our guest on This Week in America. Andrea, welcome to the program. A pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. It's so great to be here. Love having the chance to talk about the book. We came in like the wind. I love this collection. I love what you've done. There's something in here for everybody. Let's start with uh, this whole writing thing. I mentioned at a young age, you're like, what, eight years old when you started writing? Many of us at eight dreaded that. We just wanted recess to come around and didn't want to have to sit there and write. You liked it and followed it for the rest of your life. What was it What so enjoyable uh, that inspired you to write as a child? You know, I didn't realize um, how much I did, yeah, love writing until um, probably when I was in school and the teacher had asked us to, you know, write a short story, um, probably my very first short story. And never having written one before, I didn't really know, you know, what to expect. But honestly, it became, it it was so organic to me that um, I just started writing and, um, wrote this little story, you know, as most little girls do, you know, they love unicorns, they love princesses. So (laughs) I wrote a little short story about that. And um, I just, I just felt something come alive in me. And uh, my teacher loved it. I read it to the class. And um, from there, I just continued to write, um, you know, short stories as a child. Um, And yeah, it became a, a really fun pastime for me. You know, at that age, when you start, there's usually somebody who influences you, somebody maybe along the way as you're writing that says, you've got talent, continue with this. Who was your biggest supporter? Who were the influences in your life that encouraged this gift, this talent that you have? Well, definitely, I would say um, some of my teachers during school, for sure, because uh, they would read the writing and they would really um, encourage me to continue. I was quite a shy child, even into adolescence. So um, it definitely was an outlet for me. But I would think probably my biggest influence um, as I got older uh, was definitely my dad. Um, Because as we get older, we go through, you know, adolescence and uh, questioning, you know, who we are and, and, and what we're good at. And, um, and things like that. So he actually um, would take some of my my writing to his office and have his secretary type it for me. um, (laughs) Because she, she was, uh, you know, a lot faster at that. And he took some time to actually read my work and came home and said to me, did you write this? Is this really your work? And I said, Yes, absolutely. And I think it was the look on his face. I could tell he was really um, impressed and said, you need to continue to do this. Uh, This is amazing. And I didn't know you had this in you, but uh, I think it's a wonderful gift. So that's kind of how that started. And um, it just gave me more courage to write more as I got older, especially um, later on in my teenage years. I probably wrote a lot more than I did that other time span and i would say it was it was definitely his influence 
What was it like writing as a teenager? And I say that because we go through so many emotions as a teenager, and they may change from hour to hour, where suddenly you're not interested in this, but you're interested in that. What was it like? Was this the creative outlet you needed to express yourself as a, as a teenager? Was it helpful getting through these these years that can be difficult for some people? Absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, I was very shy. Um and had a lot of trouble expressing myself. Um, you know, you you question yourself, you you know your self esteem, um, just everything. Yes, lots of emotions. So I would say definitely during the later part of my teenage years uh, is when I started to really explore more in depth writing, and that's pretty much when I started the whole poetry piece because before that like I said I was doing more short stories so um it was an outlet for me for sure um and it's funny how you said emotions change <laughs> they can change <laughs> hourly because even I could write something one week and then the next week um write something different and they're totally different but um I definitely really really use that to to my advantage to to write. And also, that's when I really got involved uh, in reading some more of the classics. So more classic poetry, um, you know, buying some of those books, actually, actually asking for those books for Christmas when other people are probably asking for clothes and uh, things like that. I was asking yes. for poetry. Books. So it's, uh, it really helped me during those years for sure. Our guest on the program is Andrea Falselt, as F-A-H-S-E-L-T, Falselt, and uh, her book is available wherever books are sold, published by Leap Right Publishing, leapright.com is their website. Links uh, to her books by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, a remarkable collection of poems that beautifully explores the complexities of human emotions. The title is We Came In Like the Wind, how did your writing style evolve over the years? You mentioned switching from the short stories to poetry. Really found a home in poetry, it sounds like, because you do it so beautifully. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so I would say my style changed um, definitely, you know, just later on in my adult life. Um I think as a teenager, you know, you write about the typical teenage feelings and, you know, your first heartbreak and, uh, you know, being, you know, not part of the group and things like that. So, um, but I think as, as time went on, I started to write a little bit more about, um, you know, more depth uh, relationships, more um, things that are going on in life. So, you know, dealing with with relationships, dealing with adulthood, dealing with loss, um, and things like that. Uh, that's how that really, that piece really evolved. And honestly, whatever I was feeling at the time or what I was going through, it's an amazing outlet for me. Um, it's a real stress reliever and, um, journaling for anybody or putting your thoughts down is very therapeutic. So this is definitely my my therapeutic outlook um, and how I deal with, with everyday life. And you deal with common themes. There's such a relatability in Andrea's book that we can, we can all relate to this. And if you say, I, you know, sometimes get lost in poetry, I don't quite follow it. Boy, this is easy to understand. It has a nice flow to it. Whether you, you've been reading poetry for years or this is the first book of poetry you read, you will learn something from this and begin to, to do a, a little introspection and look at your life. And again, the book is available wherever books are sold. How about how about writing this book? Talk to me a little bit about is there a certain certain time you write or with all these ideas, I would think it's sort of like ongoing in your mind at least what you're going to write about. <laughs> is there a set time that you 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 set aside and say, okay, now I'm gonna write? Um, there isn't. And uh, people have asked me that before. Um, there's no real time that I say, okay, I'm gonna sit down and write. It comes to me. Um, at different times. Uh, there will be times when I feel like I haven't written for a while. And in my mind, I will say, okay, you know what, I'm going to maybe spend some time writing this weekend. 
or writing, you know, next week or, or spend some time and, and, and maybe do that. Um, but sometimes it just comes to me, even when I'm driving, um, a thought will come to me and I'll literally pick up my phone and hit record and I'll just start saying the words into my phone so that I have them because once they're gone out of my head, oh, <laughs> sometimes exactly. they're gone. I can't yes. retrieve them. <laughs> <laughs> and so nice with the phones now. I used to carry a little tape yeah. recorder with me because I think of these great things, but I, I wouldn't remember these great things. So, you know, you get that's, home and you think this is going to be easy. I can remember this. And it's like, I have no idea what was going through my mind at the time. So you capture yeah. those and I can see your mind working constantly as you're looking around and seeing things and sensing your emotions, maybe seeing what somebody else is going through and capturing those for the poetry. Let's talk about taking that step from you write these, you've got this collection of poems. And I, like I said, for over 10 years, you were collecting. Now you decide to get them published. You're going to write the book. What was that like making that decision to now I'm going to put these together and I'm going to share them in a book? Yes, definitely. I, I had been wanting to do that for a really long time. This has been my dream four years, probably, like I said, since I was a teenager, I wanted to write a book, I wanted to publish a book, and I wanted to share a book. So again, I'm not really sure what the feeling or what provoked me, it just something told me, you're ready. Um, and so I felt I had enough uh, content. And I put it together and decided to to publish it. So uh, we're going, I think that was, we're going on five years now, five years ago, I decided to publish it, uh, mostly because I wanted to share what I had had written, but also hope, hoping that it would resonate with other people, because part of the process of this book was that we're all different individuals, but we all share that same human um, emotions of, you know, love, loss, yes, you know, failure, all of that. So I wanted to share my work so that maybe, you know, it would resonate with people and they could read it and go, Oh, you know what? I understand that I've gone through that and I, and give them some comfort. So that was my whole thought process of that. So, and I was so thrilled, um, because that's the, um, feedback that I have gotten. So uh, it's very, it, that's very therapeutic to me as well. Um, when people can resonate with what I wrote. When you can inspire people, and again, I mentioned introspection, we're reading this and thoughts come to mind and we put ourselves in in, in the place of, of who you're writing about, of, of you as you're writing the poetry. And, and suddenly things become maybe a little more bearable, understandable, manageable in our lives. I love you say that uh, expressing one's emotions as a means of not remaining caged by hidden steel. And that keeps resonating with me because so often we get caught up in our emotions and yeah, it's like being caged by hidden steel, isn't it? We let it take over and dominate our lives or restrict our lives. Absolutely. We feel sometimes that we're alone and we don't know who to turn to and that we're the only ones feeling that it's that feeling of isolation. So if I could even have one person just read, you know, my book and, and feel some comfort and know, okay, I'm not alone. Um, and just be able to, to feel uh, that they are able to, to go on and know everybody feels these emotions. So it's, it's very global. Um, when I've had people all over just, you know, even different countries in tell me, wow, that that one really resonated with me. And I, I was going through that, like whether it's, a, you know, a relationship uh, or a loss, yes. um, a death or something. Yes, for sure. It really hits home for so many of us. And you deal with rejuvenation, you deal with the power of nature, all of this, uh, comes to life in Andrea's book, We Came In Like the Wind. I mentioned the second book. Uh, the book is Full Moon Survivor. Uh, tell me about yeah. the decision to write a second book. So, yes, Full Moon Survivor uh, definitely was something I, I wasn't planning on doing so quickly. 
Uh, but again, it this one came along a lot faster uh, than we came in like the wind. I had a lot of time, as all of us did during uh, the pandemic, <laughs> to really <laughs> yes. look inside ourselves and, and uh, take some time to breathe, realize what's important. Um, and I had a lot of time to write. So Full Moon Survivor came around quite quickly. I wrote that during the pandemic and uh, ended up publishing that one uh, just this year, January 2024. And you'll find these books by going, of course, to Amazon. We've got links on our website, thisweekinamerica.us, published by Leap Right uh, Publishers. Their website is leapright.com. The author, our guest on the program, Andrea Fawcett. Fawcett. I want to get that right. Get all the words that the letters <laughs> pronounced there. F-A-H-S-E-L-T. Book available wherever books are sold. A link at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. What are the, some of the challenges that you faced in in your writing journey? I'm sure, especially as you were working on this book, we came in like the wind. What were some of the challenges, maybe obstacles that you had to overcome? Well, definitely. Well, one of them was it, it did take a long time uh, to compile this one. But again, it wasn't something that I was focusing on. Uh, all the time, not as much as Full Moon Survivor, where I, I I really focus on that. But definitely, there were some times where you have some writer's block. You don't know what direction to take. You know you want to finish. You know you want to write. Um, so you kind of have to figure out like what is causing that. So there were definitely those times because <laughs> we get busy yes. in life. There's lots of things going on. Um, so I would just have to kind of take a step back and not uh, punish, you know, kind of punish myself and think, okay, what is wrong with me? I'm not, I'm not able to express myself right now. Um, it will come when it comes. It's all organic. Uh, and it's all based on, yeah, your emotion for sure. And like what you're feeling inside um, and what's going on in the world or in your life at the time. Once you feel those emotions, then you have to understand what we do with those feelings, with those emotions. And as you read Andrea's book or poetry, We Came In Like the Wind, you you have an idea. You She really gets us thinking, leading us in the right direction, a self-awareness we may not have had before. We mentioned book number one, book number two. What are you working on now? <laughs> no pressure, but I would assume there's another one coming. <laughs> The, the process is, is there. Yes, for sure. So I have been working on a third one. Um, and again, it seems to be coming to me uh, quite uh, quickly um, and very organic. Um, this one is different from the other two. As we came in like the wind and full moon survivor, they're very different. And when you read both of them, you can, you can feel and you can, uh, you know, resonate that okay there's a difference between these two it's almost like they know the reader will know what I'm going through in life but this third one um is a lot different it has to do uh a lot more with uh a lot more with like relationships and uh you know love and just feeling loved and being loved so uh it has a really really airy feel to it um, a little bit more on the romantic side. <laughs> Interesting. Now, when can we expect that? What uh, what timeline do you see is, is unfolding here? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, it again. I put you on the spot. I shouldn't do that. No, well, that's okay. Uh, I, I don't really know for sure because, again, it's – and people have asked me that before. Uh, when you expect to finish, when – I will know. It, 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 the book will tell me when it's finished. <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking I, of that as, as you're talking about that. Yes, it, you can't rush some of this, can you? You can't sit down today and say, okay, I'm going to be real thoughtful and insightful today, whether I feel like it or not. I mean, this is sort of, you can't force it, can you? You, you can't. But uh, I mean, if somebody was telling me, okay, you have a deadline, that I would totally understand and I could follow through with that. But uh, on my own timeline, Yes, it will tell me when it's finished. And uh, it's not quite there yet, but it's it's getting there. 
Well, we'll keep checking. If you go to uh, Amazon, the usual places, just click on the name of the author, uh, Andrea Faselt. That's F A H S E L T, and then I'll let you know. Uh, you get both books there, and when the third one is available, a minute or so left in the program, I want to talk about one other theme that's so important. You talk about uh, uh, looking for emotional and personal restoration, and I love that restoration. I mentioned rejuvenation, a theme that you have before. How important is that restoration? Because we all go through a period where we we need that restoration, don't we? Absolutely. Um, I think it's very important to the to the human condition, uh, for sure. But um, again, I, I think for myself, uh, being able to sit down and put down my thoughts. I think that's a very good, you know, start for that. And I think with anybody, if they're a writer or not, you know, writing down, uh, putting down how you're feeling, you know, expressing yourself that way, or, or, you know, talking to loved ones or someone you trust, like that's very, very important to that piece. Um, Because like I said before, we sometimes feel that, we are alone, we're dealing with all of this stuff. uh, And don't realize that there's a lot of people out there that are feeling the same things. Um, But even reading other writers, I I get a really good, um, you know, introspect into what they're writing, and thinking, okay, you know what, we're all on the same page here. (laughs) What is that like for you? What does that mean for you? You get inspiration sometimes reading others. You have people that will read your book and will find inspiration. They may tell you about it. You may know about it. You may never know about it because they live somewhere else in another country and they're inspired by your book. How does that make you feel that your writing may help somebody through a very difficult period in their life? That is the main reason why I did why I do this, um, not only for myself to write down how I feel or get my, uh, you know, emotions or expressions out, but that to me is success. That's the biggest piece of my writing. If I can make somebody, you know, their day a little bit brighter, or I write something that they can relate to and they feel okay, I can go on or I understand, you know, that's exactly why I do this. And I'm going to take just a a second here at the end to mention one thing else. And we all go through down periods. You mentioned the power of nature. It doesn't cost us anything. It's just there. Life is so much better when you buy a bag of peanuts and go feed the squirrels, isn't it? There's something that the therapeutic about getting outdoors and just looking at trees, listen to the birds, look at the sky. It's powerful. It, it really is. And um, again, I think a lot of us around the world felt that during the pandemic and COVID, um, we got to take a, a deep breath. It was a, you know, stressful time for everybody. And whether you embraced it or you didn't, that was your choice. But um, I know a lot of people chose to embrace that time they were given um, to look inside their cells again and slow down and get outside because, you know, we couldn't do a lot. So, you know, go for a walk and, you know, look, like you said, look at the trees, look at the water, look yes. at the, the flowers, and just enjoy nature and uh, know that life is too short and uh, to enjoy every, every moment we can. Great advice. I love the collection. We came in like the wind by our guest, Andrea Paul Selt, F-A-H-S-E-L-T. The book is available wherever books are sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. My thanks to LeapRight Literary for arranging our conversation with Andrea today. Their website is leapright.com. All of this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Andrea, a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to doing this again. Keep writing and we'll keep talking about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, I had a wonderful time. It has been our pleasure. The book is We Came In Like the Wind. You'll find all of this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we are back on today's program 
right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.